Hi, my name is Andrea Scala, and I'm a chef and cardiology physician assistant, and I'm here along with my sister Erin Scala, who has retinitis pigmentosa. We're here today at the Visions 2011 conference, and we just finished a session called Cooking Without Looking, which was all about tips and techniques to help people with low or no vision in the kitchen. What we're gonna do first is everybody, we've got an onion, so we peeled it already and we sliced the ends off. So we're gonna pretend we're gonna do an, an onion dice. So everybody take their hand, that's the non-cutting hand, and put it out in front of you about a foot, roughly, and put it palm down. So you're just holding your hand out palm down, and then you're gonna pretend your onion is on your lap. So just take one of your, you know, one of your thighs, and that's gonna be your onion. So you're putting your hand on top of the onion. You would have your knife in your other hand, again, your sharp knife, and you're gonna start by, we're doing a dice, so we're gonna slice perpendicular to the cutting board. We've got our onion on the cutting board. And depending if you want large dice, or if you want medium dice or small dice, you're gonna put you know two or three slits perpendicular. And the reason why you have your hand flat like that is so you don't cut yourself. The next technique, we've got our onion, we sliced it like three times um, perpendicular to the cutting board. So everybody take that same hand, the non, the one that you don't have the knife in, and, and put it out in front of you and make a C. Now if you're left-handed with the knife, you're gonna have an opposite C. So it kind of looks like a Pac-Man, if you will. And you're just holding it in front of you. And then just take your hand and tilt it down so you're touching the onion and your, your C is now looks like half of an M. So you kind of have just a, I don't even know how to describe that. A dome, dome shape, half yeah. circle. Yeah. Half circle, but it's pointing down, your nails are down. And you're gonna put that on top of your onion. And again, the point of this is to get your fingers out of the way. Yeah, Joe, you, you've got it. Yep, and you guys got it in front there. And then you take your thumb and you're tucking it behind your finger. Again, I'm on top of the onion. Because if you put your thumb in front, it's going to end up yeah. not on your hand. It's going to end up <laughs> in your soup or something like that. So I'm going to raise my hand for anybody who can see. I've got my onion, and I'm going to hold it. So you're kind of just I'm grabbing it right now. So you're just, you just want to make sure it's out of the way. Your pointer finger and your middle finger go through two circles, and then on top of your hand is a, a block, a guard, so that it takes the place of your fingernails, so even if you're still scared, it's plastic and you just hit the plastic and then you know where to cut. So none of your fingers are in the way and it's perfect and you don't have any fingers in your soup. Andrea is using, one side of it is black and one side of it is white for people that still have usable vision and contrast is a problem. Uh, when I used to be able to see, if I had, um, a, some type of dark meat, I would always put it on the lighter side of the cutting board or vice versa if I had, you know, mashed potatoes or something. Not that I'm cutting them, but I would be able to see them better on the dark side. So it's basically for people that have difficulty with contrast. So it's very helpful. So we're moving on to scrambled eggs. What I did was just cracked two eggs in a bowl. Nothing fancy. Erin, I'm going to pass this to you. Do you want to do you want the table or do you want to just do it in your hand? I'll just do it in my hand. All right. So let me see if I can be talented. Just whip some eggs. For the eggs, I keep touching them. And you can do it even a little harder than that. Perfect. Now, if you want it to be healthy, right? Because we're all healthy. We don't eat egg yolks and things like that. Now, actually, eggs are not as bad as we used to think they are with cholesterol and things. But if you want to separate the eggs, the, the two ways that I know that are the easiest, um, again, you, you crack the egg on your, uh, on your counter, and then you have the two halves in your, um, in your hand, and you kind of shimmy them back and forth with the yolk. I think that's even difficult for me because I'm like, oh no, I got some of the shell in there. But another way to do it, again, for people with low vision, is just crack your egg, dump it in your left hand, let's say, and then let the, let the whites just, uh, over a bowl, of course, <laughs> make sure you have a bowl, um, let the whites go through your fingers and you'll have the yolk just sitting in your palm. And I'm not kidding, you make a mess with your hand, but it's so easy to do it that way. Or do it right-handed if you're right-handed. And you could do a bunch of eggs if you're just doing an omelet with egg whites. Did I mix these enough? That's perfect, Erin. I'm just going to give it one little juice. It's perfect, but you need to do it again. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. I'm a type A. You, All right. you may notice that. So ready? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so I'm on the other side, Erin. Um, Chef over here is just putting those eggs mixed into our saute of onions, tomatoes, spinach. That was just a little olive oil. You just put some salt and pepper on there. 
this is just a normal kitchen timer, except... Is there print on it too? I don't even know. There is print. It's a <laughs> 0, 5, 10, 50, yes. 20. There's, um, so a sighted person could use this too, but all you do is um, just twist it like a normal timer, but there's tactual dots on there too, so there's dots for, well, two and a half minutes, I guess, so it goes from zero, two and a half, five minutes, ten minutes, in between, there's, so I guess it goes by every two and a half minutes, but you can feel the tactual dots on there to know, oh, I, I need a half an hour, so you can just spin it to six o'clock, and there you go, and it just dings like a normal timer. Did we talk yet about putting dots on the stove, on the dials of the stove when you're turning your burner on. To me, that would be a challenge, especially with the woman who talked about just a little bit ago, the gas burner. I don't know about you, but I'm scared to use it and I'm sighted. And I, th I do think that would be one of the biggest challenges. And of course, I love my gas burners, like I'll never go back because it's, it's easier for me. But Erin, I mean, what do you think about gas burners versus I, electric? I, I have an electric burner, or electric burners, and it's, I wouldn't, be able to use get I would be too scared so um, on my electric burners I on the dial I just have you know a dot on the off and then I have it labeled at medium high low key things like that so mm -hmm. I just meet the dots basically of where they need to go the dot on the dial to the medium if I need medium heat or anything like that what happens if you you know you have spices and how much spice do you put in? Erin, what's a good way to measure, like your a couple ways you can measure your spices? Well, definitely don't, don't overdo it. dump the spices, whether you're measuring it by putting it in your hand. Don't do it over your pot that you're cooking in because you never know. It, you, I'd rather have less than way too much. But um, either dumping it in your hand over a separate empty bowl. Red pepper flakes. Am I doing it? Well, we already put them in, but oh. it's just a jar of red, oh. red pepper flakes. Okay. And um, yeah, so doing it away from the pot, you can either pinch it out if you have a jar, or if it's a shaker, you can just shake it into your hand. And that's with any seasoning, garlic or salt, anything. A microplaner is a great, great device for anybody. I don't care if you're excited or not. And what it is, it's just a grater and you have a handle, and they come in different sizes and different grates. And yeah, and these are awesome. The nice thing about this is you can take nutmeg, you can take the cinnamon stick, you can take a hunk of grated cheese, which we're gonna do oh, here. Yeah. And uh, you just grate it in two seconds, you've got your you know, your grated cheese or whatever. So Aaron, I've got a big bowl right in front of you. It's right. just a bowl of garbage. Mm. And here's your hunk of Parmesan hunk cheese. Hunk of cheese. And you're really just gonna, without grating your fingers, of course, because I've done that too. Let's hope I don't do that. Perfect, so she's just shown us a sample. We've already put it on the pasta, but again, it takes like five seconds. And oh yes. And then I just give it a quick tap and it all falls kind of off the bottom. We've got a piece of salmon. We've got a couple actually, and this is just, uh, well chef, it came from you, but do you know what kind of salmon this uh, is? It's, a, it, it's actually a farm-raised salmon. Okay, so and it's just a nice piece, maybe about what? It's about, uh, about five or six ounces. Five or six yeah. ounces, it's just a single, single piece. So I'm just going to put it on my, my cutting board. And remember not to use your cutting board again if you put raw fish or raw meat. All right, so a little bit of olive oil. I'm rubbing it on. I actually have a glove on just to protect my hand because it's easier. But if you're home, you don't have to do that. And Erin, do you want to do the salt if I show you where? Sure. OK, so here's a container of salt. All right. And you're just going to grab. So we're going to just do use, uh, well, you don't really have to use the method in the palm because she knows how much she's grabbing out of the container. So she's just grabbing a little bit, and then on the cutting board right in front. Is it? Yep, right there. And I'll move it. There you go. I'll flip it over. Put a little salt right in the middle. I'm going to help her by... Yeah, I don't want to touch the fish without a glove. Exactly. And then, Chef, do you want to give a squirt of pepper, please? So we're just salt salting and peppering our salmon. olive oil. That's all we got on here. You can put whatever you want on it. You can put a marinade, you can put a dry rub, you can put the Lowry salt, which I think is delicious. And then I'm going to open up my George Foreman and just spray a little bit of Pam spray. Do this left. Let's see how this works. This just helps it not stick and I, I use it a lot. And then All right, so we've got our fish going in there, and while that's working, I'm gonna take my glove off. Thank you, Chef. 
and it's sizzling. And so it leads us to the part about how do you know when your meat is done or your seafood. So a couple of ways that we can talk about, thank you, is we have a talking thermometer. We're gonna try this out and see if this is uh, gonna work perfectly for us. But it's just kind of looks like a regular thermometer that you, know, you would buy that you could read. And let's see if we turn it on. So she just talks to you. And we can't change her to different types of voices, though. <laughs> I like to change her to English. But anyway, so we're going to just stick this in at the end when we think our meat is done. These are just some of the techniques and tips that you can use. There's so many more out there, but we hope you enjoyed the session today and that you get in the kitchen and start cooking.